Now you brought your Bible along today, so we're going to measure that. Put it over here. Let's see how, how big your Bible is. So your Bible is six and a half inches wide. How far is it this way? Yeah, there you go. And about seven and three quarters. So I can measure why it's Bible. That tells me what? How about that way? I better measure it that way too. I forgot one way. About six and a half. Thank you for helping me. So Wyatt, he measured his Bible there. That tells me that if I can measure it, it's what? It starts with letter R. If I can measure something, it's real. Yeah, you got it. If I can measure something, it tells me it's real. So in today's Bible passage, the one doing the measuring is using a golden uh, measuring stick. And because he's measuring something, it tells you that what he's measuring is real. All right? So take your Bibles there. And uh, we're going to notice something here in the Bible. I'll try and follow you here, Mr. Wyatt. Did I turn myself back on? Okay. So the first thing I'd like for us to look at is the great city, this great city. So you notice in your Bible there, we're in Revelation 21, as I mentioned earlier, there's someone there that's doing some measuring with a, a golden measuring rod, okay? It says here that this great city, depending, depending on your translation, Mine says 1,500 miles. Yours might say 1,400 or 1,380. That's somewhere in that range. It is 1,500 miles in diameter. Okay. That means you can go from Fargo, <coughs> Fargo, North Dakota, drive west, all the way past Seattle, Washington, probably out into the ocean some way. You probably need a Chevrolet to do that. 
That's how uh, long this city is. That's the length of this city. 1,500 miles. That way. The city is also the same length, or it's, its length and width are the same. So that means you could go from Pembina, North Dakota. Everybody know where Pembina is? Yep, we got some people here that know where Pembina is. You can go from Pembina, North Dakota, all the way to Houston, Texas. And you're still in city limits. Okay. And you can go 1,500 miles this way, straight up. That sounds like a great city, doesn't it? So just think about that for a while. That's how big this city is, 1,500 miles. Unhandy. All right. Now remember that this city is also uh, created or built by God. The architect and builder is who? God. Okay. If you can build a city 1,500 miles wide, 1,500 miles long, and 1,500 miles high, you're pretty creative, aren't you? Yep. Plus, he created the heavens and the earth that we live on even today. Okay. So it's a big place. It is a great city. Also notice then, as we think of this great city, notice what it's made out of. The gold city. Where's my Jana at? Oh, there you go. You remember that? Yep, I gave her the outline on Monday, so she's uh, following it real close. Okay, so you got the great city, the gold city. Verse 18 tells us that the material of the wall was jasper, and the city was pure gold. Fargo, North Dakota, way past Seattle, Washington. Pembina, North Dakota, way down to Houston. And that same distance up. All gold. That's a lot of gold. I have no doubt in my mind that God can easily manufacture that much gold. I talked to my brother. He lives over in Minnesota. He's a builder. Uh, he provides all the uh, contractors with lumber and windows and sheetrock and all this and that. And, and lumber is really, really, really high now. It's very hard to get. They're running out of supplies, and it's a real challenge for uh, building builders this time of year and, and those trying to sell it. Some of the stuff, you just can't get it anymore. God will never run out of gold to build his city. Notice also that it's like clear glass. You can see wherever. It's all like transparent. It's a couple of times in there. A transparent like glass. You just jump down to verse 21 there. The glory of God shines everywhere. It is a bright city. There's no night. It's always daytime there. Okay. So we see that the city is made out of pure gold. Notice those stones that make the city uh, sparkle. It uh, uh, dresses up the city. So we notice that about these, uh, the city. My friend back home in Edinburgh, my neighbor back there when we used to farm, he was a grave digger. And he always liked to tell me this uh, story. He said, Tom, there was a rich man. He had a lot of gold. And uh, he told uh, the funeral director, Charlie, you might like this one. Or maybe since you're retired, you're done with funeral jokes, huh? Anyhow, <clears throat> he told the funeral director, now you make sure and when you put me in that casket and lower me six feet down, you make sure you put my gold in there also. I want to be buried with my gold. I'm taking it with me. So sure enough, they buried him with the gold and a nice little bag there. And uh, the man 
went to heaven carrying his gold in his uh, duffel bag there. And Jesus asked him when he saw him, he said, what do you got in the bag there? He opened it up and showed Jesus all these, this nice gold, these gold bars. And Jesus looked at him and said, why did you bring pavement? You'll notice the street is made out of gold, pure gold. I probably won't be able to literally bring your gold to heaven, but anyhow, when I see a street in heaven made of pure gold, as transparent like glass, what do you do on a street? You drive on it, you bet. You drive your bike or you go walking on a sidewalk or on the street. It is for movement, right? You move things on a street. So therefore, in heaven, there's going to be movement. You're not going to sit in a recliner or a, a, what a, a hammock for eternity, swinging back and forth, drinking lemonade. There's going to be movement in heaven. Okay, and we'll notice that again a little bit lower here. Okay, so we also notice then the great city, the gold city, the glorious city. Notice as you keep reading on there, there's no temple in heaven. There's no need for one. We need a church down here, don't we? A place to go and worship the Lord. Here in heaven, this new city, there's no temple because the Lord God and the Almighty and the Lamb <coughs> are its temple. You'll notice also, <coughs> sorry, also notice in verse 23 there, there is no need for the sun or the moon, for the glory of God has illumined it and its lamp is lamb. See? So you notice in there that the glory of God and the lamb, they both shine. They shine the same. God the Father, God the Son, they shine the same. So you get a little flavor of, or a little taste, a uh, little theology there of the Trinity. They are the same. Jesus is the Son of God. He's God. And we see him here shining in the glory of God. Okay? There's no need for the sun there because Jesus is there. God the Father is there. Okay? So we notice that. We also notice here in verse uh, 24, the nations, that's uh, God's people, those who have placed their faith in Christ, will walk by its light. Again, notice the word walk. There's movement in heaven. Don't just sit around and be bored all day long. There's movement up there. There's walking. You're, you're going someplace. Okay. Nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Okay. Now, there's kings of the earth, and I'm not exactly sure what that specifically means. Uh, some kind of, a, for lack of a better word, a form of government, if that kind of makes sense. It's not government as we know it, but somehow there's these kings of the earth. I thought about that earth for a while. Now from Fargo to Seattle, that's a long ways. And from Pemina to Houston, that's a long ways also. That's a big city. That's one city in, the, in this new heavens and a new earth. Imagine how big the earth has to be to hold an a city that size. Be plenty of space for golfing. Or whatever. It's going to be a big place. This heaven and earth that's brand new that someday God's going to make. Now notice the kings of the earth they're bringing. There's they're they're up to something. They're bringing glory. Now, the first thing that popped into my mind was bringing in five-gallon buckets, but I'm not sure if that's accurate or not, but somehow they're bringing glory to God, okay? They're bringing it into this city. So there's a location out there, the earth, and people live out there, and they come into this city, in the new heavens and new earth, this new holy city, New Jerusalem, okay? We also notice that the gates will never be closed. I like that word. There's no reason to close the gates. You know, back home many years ago, 
we used to leave the keys and the pickup trucks, tractors, whatever. Left the house unlocked. You know, you never know when your neighbors might need a vehicle. They get stranded or whatever. They need to get back home or uh, bad weather. They can help themselves in the house there. And uh, we don't always do that anymore, do we? Uh, we take the keys out of things or sometimes if they're uh, not out in the middle of the field or whatever, we just leave the keys in there. But generally speaking, we take them out, we hide them under the tire or wherever we might hide them. Uh, in heaven, there's no reason to uh, hide the keys anymore. Leave the keys in the vehicle. Leave the doors wide open. You can come and go any time of the day. There's no night. The gates will never be closed. They don't need to be closed. And that would bring us to our last point. So we notice the great city, the gold city, the glorious city. Now we also notice the gracious city. And they will bring their glory and honor of the nations into it. And nothing unclean. And no one who practices abomination and lying shall ever come into it. That's why the gates can be left wide open all the time for eternity. No one unclean comes into this city. So there's only one way that we can be clean to enter into this city. And that one way is who? Jesus, his shed blood on the cross. We must be covered, washed in the blood of the Lamb. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. The Bible says that I have sinned against you. It's not a matter of whether or not, well, I'm a pretty nice person. You, know, you might be a, a fantastic person, and you are fantastic people. But according to the Word of God, we have broken His standard. And we are all sinned and fall short to the glory of God. We all need to be washed in the blood of the Lamb to be clean. And that's what His blood does for us. It washes us clean. And so we can enter then, not because of anything that we've done, but because of how Jesus has washed us and cleansed us with his blood. It also serves as a word of warning too then. The Bible clearly says that no one who is unclean will enter it. No one who practices abomination or lying, will, they will never enter that. So today, if you've never accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, uh, be warned that you're not going to make it to heaven. And that concerns us as people. We are concerned about that. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we would like you to uh, accept him today. That, that concerns us. It concerns God. That's why he wrote this down so that you can see that and you can say, you know, I think I'm on the wrong path. I, I'd like to have Christ in my life. I'd like to have him cleanse me and wash me that I can get to this place, this new city, this holy city, new uh, Jerusalem. The unclean, it says here back in chapter 19, those who don't know Christ are cast into a lake of fire. And we don't want that for anybody. Nor does Jesus. He is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance and faith and be saved. And that's why he came to die on the cross for your sins and my sins. Because he's preparing a place for you, as John 14 says. Okay. So look at that then, at verse 27. Those who enter into this holy city, this new Jerusalem, only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. There's one way to get your name written in that Lamb's Book of Life, and that's to simply ask Jesus. Lord Jesus, would you be willing to write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life? There's going to be books in heaven, and I want to make sure that my name is in the Lamb's Book of Life, and I want to make sure your name is there also. And that's through faith in Jesus. So hear these words then. Take your Bibles and turn to John 14. When you look at Revelation 21, it's a word of encouragement for you. We have a great home to go to someday. 
someday when we leave this earth, when we die, we have a great city. We have a gold city, a glorious city, a gracious city. That's pretty encouraging, isn't it? That's good news for us. So hear these words of Jesus then. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go and prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way. You know, how, you know where it is. You know where I'm going. Well, Thomas, he said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How are we going to know the way? And Jesus, he said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So there's one way to get to this great city. There's one way to get to this glorious city, this gold city, this gracious city. And that's through Jesus. That's the gospel. And he wants you to come there. He gives you the invitation right here today. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And that's the good news that we have to share. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word that you've given to us. Thank you for your gracious gospel invitation to come to this uh, great city, this gold city, this glorious city, this gracious city, a place where you are always there. You shine bright. We ask, Lord, that you would encourage our hearts, draw us close to you, to the gift of salvation, washing us clean. Lord, if there are those who don't know you yet, they uh, haven't heard of you, they've rejected you, or whatever it might be, that you would send your Holy Spirit to stir in their hearts and draw them to you to believe in God. Thank you, Jesus, for today. In your name I pray. Amen. Well, as we get ready to uh, wrap up here, we're going to have the music team come back up and we'll get ready for our next song. That's uh, 10,000 Reasons. You should have a sheet there. As we get ready for that, should we close with our Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Mm -hmm.